and you are very welcome. This is The Beautiful Truth with Fintan Dunn. Thanks for joining me, folks. You know, January is a good time for government tricks because the public is still a little bit asleep after the Christmas break. And indeed, this January 2019 is no exception because we were due within weeks to get a report from the Commission of Investigation looking into mother and baby homes, the Tume scandal, and 17 other institutions in Ireland which have similar practices. Now, it turns out that the Decepticons are on the attack. Why? Because the government is to seek, uh, is to listen to a request from the judge for another one year extension in the remit of the Commission. And so there won't be a report in a few weeks time as the tens of thousands of affected people had hoped. Instead, we're to get another unspecified delay, probably one year. Anyway, let me let Claire Daly take this issue up in the uh, Houses of Parliament. And uh, I, I notice people are leaving here, by the way. Um, I, I know the, the uh, Doyle isn't often that populated, but I don't see Sinn Féin or Labour here, do you? I mean, they make a lot of noise about the issue, but when the government is out in January doing the dirt... It's only the independents, Claire Daly, Catherine Connolly and John Collins, to hold them to account. I find it jaw-dropping that we have a scenario where after four years we've had three interim reports comprising of less than 40 pages between them, two of those interim reports looking for more time, and the interim rep other interim report really talking about some processes. No details, no findings. What in God's name is going on? The process here has been an abysmal failure which has re-traumatised many of the people who were already traumatised. Montana. The scope of the investigation is broad and at the outset the time frame was acknowledged as ambitious. Let's just focus in on the old Decepticons trick there. I mean, if the... Uh, from the get-go, this was seen as ambitious, then why didn't the government appropriately resource the Commission? Why didn't the Commission ensure that it was appropriately resourced, raise these issues with the government, take care that it would meet its deadline? Because they are treating the affected people with complete disdain, that's why. I received the fourth interim report in December of 2018. And I met with the chair of the commission, Judge Yvonne Murphy, last week to discuss the request for the extension of the time frame. Following our meeting, I am confident that the commission is using its best endeavors to conclude the investigation as expeditiously as possible. Well, as expeditiously as possible, if you don't mind taking years and years longer than you originally planned. How is it that a judge who's heading up this investigation only comes in December to the government to let the government know that it wants another year? Another year! And that it won't manage to make February after all. That it's going to miss February by a year, it tells the government, in December. There is complete disdain, isn't there, for the affected community? This should have been flagged back in June, earlier, and the Commission and the Government and the Minister should have ensured that they could meet the targets. They, this is deliberate, folks. It would not be helpful to speculate at this stage on what the Government will decide ahead of the Cabinet meeting. And I hope to announce the details of the interim report as soon as possible. Um. Yeah. Well, the uh, issue was going to the Cabinet this week and uh, I'm speculating that the Cabinet will simply rubber stamp this unless we stop them. Thanks, Minister, for that reply, but it didn't answer any of our questions in any way fully. I'm just going to make one point maybe you could take on board. The Commission should produce, before the promised mid-February publication date, a further interim report to deal specifically and solely with redress matters. That should be brought to us before uh, uh, mid-February. Absolutely, and a great point by John Collins, and thank you for making it. You see, the um, you know those who are true of these institutions have no great illusions about the amount of truth that is going to come out of this process. They expect, in fact, 
that it will be less than the tr reality. And I think the government has gone uh, to great lengths to make sure the full truth isn't coming out. Nevertheless, they did at least expect that we would get the substantive issues of redress dealt with, that the state would then have a basis for looking at its own liabilities and it could assess its own liabilities in relation to these people and we could put the appropriate structures in place to provide them with redress. That was the most important thing. So if anything is to be published, then it should be published soon and it should be that redress component, which could be published in February, no problem. Stand alone on its own. The anger on the ground is palpable and from day one there was an absence of trust and I went out on a limb out on a limb to give the, the system a chance and looking back on that it was rather foolish because 2015 to 19 we've got nothing but delay obfuscation Very and a blurring of boundaries absolutely and she isn't the only one who feels betrayed i know the community feels betrayed as well as she said she went out on a limb uh, believing the minister and the government at their words that they were engaging substantively in these issues and now she feels betrayed, so does everybody else. So there is nothing surprising here except that it's the same old, same old. And we thought that we had moved on, didn't we? Okay, um, in my own capacity as minister, we have done some additional things in, in, uh, alongside of and parallel to the Commission of Investigation. And the report that I have received from the Collaborative Forum, which we established, of people who represent um, uh, and, and were actually themselves uh, 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 residents with... Now hold on a second, Minister. Isn't it convenient now that the Minister is now turning to a collaborative forum structure that she set up uh, in order to fill the gap left by the fact that there isn't a report here? So that would lead the suspicious person, I mean the likes of Clara Daly and perhaps the likes of you, to wonder if in fact the collaborative forum was set up by the minister knowing full well that this delay would be sought now and therefore wanting to have a fig leaf to wear. The collaborative forum, that structure is one which Minister Sapone invited me onto the panel which picked the collaborative forum because of my role in First Mothers and as a signal to First Mothers that uh, you know the government was happy for First Mothers to play a role in whatever would play out. Of course, I resigned from that position in that selection panel on the second meeting because it was a sham, it was a government agenda. And those who are part of that collaborative forum have been handpicked, in essence, by the government. Now, the government has also flown members of that collaborative forum that Minister Sapone is going to talk about here now, flown them out to Boston with the minister and put them up in a luxury hotel. Do you think that's consistent with them providing an independent insight into the survivor community needs? Do you think that's the optics that we should have? Or do you think that makes people feel that, hold on, this is Karanua all over again? In these institutions um, have met uh, for a number of months, have put a report together, and that report is with me, which I am considering, and is a very significant report. And we will, and 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 I will bring that to cabinet, as I said, and we will go through a process of responding to that. That is a parallel in terms of what the Commission of Investigation is doing. In addition to, as you are well aware, the in lengthy process that we took in, in, by way of responding to what's gone on in terms of uh, the findings in terms of the remains of children in Chum. Yes, the focus on Chum. Now, the government has a strategy here, all right. And the strategy is that you see dead babies don't sue. At the end of the day, the government's caught on the Tum issue, huge popular support for having that issue dealt with down in Tum, with thousands of people protesting on the streets. So, it suits the government to an extent. As I say, dead babies don't sue. They can't, can they? So at the end of the day, the government's strategy is to exhume the dead babies and bury the mothers. Bury anybody who's alive. Bury them, defer them, delay them. Anything. Because the dead can't sue. So every time you hear Minister Sapone talking about the tomb babies and talking about memorials, remember that memorials are just relatively cheap pieces of concrete in many cases. And dead babies don't sue. This is the strategy which is being played out by the government now. 
I, I turned down the sound there on Zapon because it's the same old waffle, isn't it? So where does it leave you if you've been affected by these issues and you're now feeling as betrayed as others are? I think it leaves you with a clear choice to see these people in court. There are already legal options opening up for those who are uh, still suffering as a result of what they went through in these institutions. And I'll be back with some more details on all of that very shortly. But it is possible to pursue this legally and to put the kind of pressure on the government which will produce some level of humanity in terms of their response. Without that, you are going to continue to be treated with the disdain which you have witnessed now in the behaviour of the government and the judge. Who I, I, I've lost confidence in the judge. A judge, given the seriousness of this issue, the scale and scope of the number of people who have been affected by it, the ongoing trauma of it all, to wait until December, just before the publication date of an expected report, to announce that you're not going to hit the date. I'm sorry, I no longer have confidence in the minister and obviously I don't have any confidence in the judge. I think you need to look at your legal options and Irish First Mothers have been exploring those legal options and I'll be back very shortly with more to elaborate on that for you and to see how you can add some weight to your case which will rebalance this in favour of truth and justice. That's what we're all supposed to be here for, isn't it, in the first place. All right, I'll be back very soon with that, and uh, I do hope you'll join me for that. But in the meantime, for Irish First Mothers, this has been Fintan Donald reporting. Thanks for joining me.